Ah, Asura. Let's import a model. <laughs> we need to be able to drag and drop in Asura. I mean, please. All right, here is our hollowed model. Support generation in Asura is a lot easier. A lot easier. It's also, it's also more uniform, and I like that. Uh, the density here, from four, I do it at two point five for it because it is a small model. You could change all of these; they all mean something, and you could just play with it, add your support, play with it again, see what happens. Um, all slicers have what is known as the angle. This angle assumes that past that angle, no supports will be done. So that way you don't get supports in the top. There is a button on here that says remove internal. There was the same one in Chitu box, and I didn't go over that. What this means is that no supports are generated on the inside hollowed portion of the model. I do have models where that is mandatory. <laughs> and if I do not do it, the model will fail. So on this model, I do not need internal support. So I'm just going to click Generate. There we go. Clear. Generate. Well, it's actually a very interesting... I didn't expect this result. So this is actually very neat to look at. It's got the bottommost portion, I think. No, it doesn't. Look at that. It's missing one right there. So it doesn't have the bottommost portion, and it rises in this beautiful symmetrical uh, position. I, the support placement is beautiful, but we missed that. How did we miss that? Well, we're going to have to click Add. We're going to have to put it right there. And another thing that we don't have is, since it is like a sail, that's, that's great in one direction, but we don't have the sail action blocked at all, so we're going to have to put some more supports on here. What I'm going through in my head is how, as it starts from the build plate, the very bottom, and starts to generate this, right about here where it touches, this is where we start getting into the model, and it starts rising, we've got some wonderful supports, and then right about here we have no supports, so this area right here is generated off of the support structure we already had, and then these supports will start to, to add in, this will help stabilize it, and then it goes higher, and then we have these two stabilizations, and then all of these supports work to stabilize the rest of the model. And what I am looking at, what I am in my head going over to see if this is enough, or if I should add a few more. I want, and I am stuck, personally, one of the things that I go through is an issue of minimalism. Whenever I generate supports, I go through a thought process of absolute minimalism. And at some times, that bites me in the ass. At other times, it matters not. So the question right now is, will that pull for support minimalism bite me in the ass? You know what? I won't know until it's printed. But from experience, let's not fight it too much. If if that's a knee-jerk reaction, you're worried about it, work to solve it. It is sometimes easier to dial back from too many supports than it is to try to push someone to make more supports. Because you need to get over the fear of using too many supports and making a mess down below. The option is a failed print. Too many supports, the worst thing that will happen is the supports will fail and the other ones will do their job and you'll start to see that you didn't need those supports in the first place, but you have a successful print. So what do you want? A print that failed because of too few supports, or a print that succeeded even though it has too many failed supports. Hmm. <laughs> so let's keep it simple. I'm fighting the angle of too few supports. Okay, with that done, 
I am going to save this with supports from Isura.